Hello, and welcome back to this playthrough of Warriors All-Stars. I am Scutlist, and starting with this episode, we are making sure we hit all optional battles before they have a chance to vanish on us. So for this episode, we will be doing the dramatic battle, Just a Normal Girl, getting some Chun-Li flashbacks here. And for this battle, we will be playing as Kasumi. So then, let's get started. Alright, battlefield info. Uh, our three heroines, a generic, and a bunch of peasants. And looking at the defeat conditions, uh, or the peasants are annihilated. I guess that means I, lo I lose if I lose all four of them. Which means three are expendable. Works for me. And our enemies are just a bunch of bandits. Alright, let's get started. <laughs> Now then, Kasumi, this is not actually her first ap ap first appearance in a Warriors game. She was also playable in Warriors Orochi 3 Ultimate, but long story short, I did not like her moveset in that game. In that game, her moveset was based on uh, her ninja gu gu guiding appearances. But, uh, here in Warriors All-Stars, her moveset is now instead based on, uh, her, her dead or, or alive appearances, which honestly makes, a, makes for a much better moveset for her. Alright then, as, let, let's get started demonstrating what she can do. First off, her normal attack combo. There you go, her C1. Hers, the first time I looked at her C1 where she uppercuts, I thought it would be more of a combo starter, but no, it doesn't really knock, knock the enemy up that much. Anyway, let's find a nice clump of enemies and we can continue on uh, her C2. C3. That was her C4. Let me do that again because I failed to announce what I was doing. One, two, three, C4. Alright, uh, here, <laughs> an enemy base, uh, C5. One, two, three, four, five. And lastly, your C6. One, two, three, four, five, six. And last attack of hers to demonstrate, her Musa. I just like how straightforward her Muso is. I could never really understand how to control her Muso in Orochi 3. Okay, next up, I guess we can s start demonstrating our support abilities. Let's start with the most interesting of them, Yukimura. Which adds a f which adds a fire effect to our attacks. The fire effect effect is something worth discussing a little. So, uh, hits an uh, hits an enemy with the fire effect, and they will slowly ac accumulate extra damage for so long as your combo is going on. At least as far as I could can understand understand it. The fire effect cannot kill the enemy, but it can continuously drain their health bar. Ryu Hayabusa's support ability is one we've seen used against us on a few occasions. 
but it's one of the purely purely uh, attacking support abilities. Shiki is just a straight lightning attack. Very strong, though. Very strong. And Melina's is an interesting one. She pulls the enemies into a, into a, a vacuumed area to that lets you hit them easier. I found Melina's support ability very useful when, say, you're fighting a swarm of enemy officers all at once. In fact, in some ways, I'd say Melina is one of the most uh, most useful s support abilities in the game. I've tried using her, and I can say I'm not exactly a big fan of her move sets, but I'd, I would recommend her as a support character. Hmm, I can get into that bow and arrow base down here. I wonder if that door would open if I took that base. You know, on the subject of support abilities, when I was selecting the characters to take with Sh Sh Shiki and Tamaki last episode, I was just picking characters based on directly using them. Hold on, I'm going to need to go to a peasant in a moment. Based on the characters I'd be directly using, but after doing that, I realized that, uh... I got rid of Joe Song, my movement speed buffer, as well as both Plopta and Yuanji, my healers. I could have thought that decision out a bit more. Anyway, taking this base has not opened that gate. Okay. Anyway, let's find whichever whichever peasant is uh, in danger. Could I determine which peasant is in danger from the pause menu? No, I can't see their health bars. Okay, I'm going to assume this red dot right here is the one attacking our friendly peasants. No, that peasant has too much health. He couldn't possibly have been the one being attacked. So let's investigate that exclamation point. Okay, hold on. Is there a peasant around here? Peasant right here, and yeah, this was that. That's that's probably the one I was notified about. Now, as long as the enemy officer is gone, he should be fine. Let's clear out a few of these pests just to be safe, though. Anyway, yeah, I'd say I much prefer Warriors All-Stars Kasumi over Orochi 3 Ultimate Kasumi. Nothing to do right now, but take take out a few bases. Uh, what happened to the flag up at the top? Oh, an ally took that base. I'm not complaining. Hmm, 
Okay, what's next? I assume top right to the enemy main camp? And this should be... this should bring the fight to its end. Let's see, where's the leader? Over back here. Why does the game lock onto an enemy behind you? That just seems so counter-logical to me. And I think he blocked it. Man, Shiki's supportability may actually be one of the better, uh, damaging supports in the game. Also, he seems to st his standing animation seems to be, uh, the same way Zhang Hua or anyone equipped with the flying swords would stand in the Dynasty Warriors games. Well then, that was Kasumi, and after that experience, I can say that I don't want to waste my time with the Orochi 3 Kasumi again. Anyway, where was the next Keystone battle? Way over there. So, that will about wrap it up for this episode. Ne next time, we will be looking at the, at the next Keystone battle, in pursuit of Yomi, the uh, Tamaki and Shiki version of the battle. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.